My name is John Moffat and this is a short introduction to uh, the financial management exam uh, which used to be called paper F9 uh, but for any of you who are having unfortunately to repeat the exam uh, to retake it um, don't worry nothing's changed apart from um, the name it's now FM instead of F9 However, uh, for everybody's benefit, um, let me talk through uh, basically what the exam's about, an outline of the syllabus and how it's examined, uh, and how to go about studying for it. Um, first of all, the, the syllabus, it, there are quite a lot of headings in the syllabus, but overall the job of the financial manager uh, unlike in performance management, which was paper F5, where they're making more short-term decisions to improve the business, the financial manager's job is more long-term. It's their job to decide how the company's going to raise long-term finance. So all companies need to raise long-term finance in order to be able to buy machines, etc. But it's the financial manager to decide how we're going to raise money. Should we simply do some long-term borrowing, take a long-term loan from the bank or something, or shall we issue more shares? Uh, and having decided how they're going to raise the finance, it's their job to decide where we're going to invest it, what machines we're going to buy. Is a machine worth buying or isn't it? You know, look at what we forecast it'll generate for us in the future. Or maybe we have a choice between machines uh, which is the better one to choose, but how are we going to invest our long-term money in machines, etc., for the long term? Uh, in addition, uh, working capital. If we're going to expand the company by buying new machines and producing more and selling more, that's going to result in us, if we're selling more, having more receivables, needing to carry more inventories, and so on. And again, that needs financing, it needs managing properly, we need to make sure we're collecting our receivables efficiently, you know, that uh, we're not letting people take three months credit or something and perhaps never paying us. Well again, it's the job of the financial manager and those really are the three core areas. Uh, how we raise finance, business finance, business valuations, how we raise the money in the first place, different ways of raising money, different ways of issuing shares, what's the cheapest way of raising money, how are we going to invest the money, investing in new projects, new machines, and managing our working capital, our receivables, our inventory, our cash balances, those really are the three core areas and the rest of the headings, the first two, uh, are not, not really any calculations involved. It's more background knowledge and discussion, partly about the job of the financial manager, which is what I've been talking about, but also the environment. Uh, knowing, not in great detail, but knowing, for instance, how the stock exchange works. If we're going to raise money by issuing shares, we need to know how the system works. Well, that sort of thing. And finally, risk management. Uh, really two areas here, as you'll see when you watch our lectures. Uh, one is what we call foreign exchange risk management. That if we are buying for abroad, if we're in the UK, we get invoice perhaps in dollars. And the problem is, by the time we come to pay the bill, the exchange rate may have changed. Or we end up having to pay more, or we end up having to pay less. Well, that's risk, and there's ways we can go about managing that risk uh, of exchange rate movements. Uh, and on the other side, it's something called interest rate risk management, as you'll see. Um, you won't be asked calculations on it in this paper. Uh, but interest rate risk management, if you borrow money, obviously there's a risk that interest rates will change, go up, go down. There's risk, pay more, pay less. Well, you need to be able to certainly 
discuss ways in which perhaps we can manage or remove that risk. So it's actually a very interesting exam. And although the first two sections of the syllabus, I've already said, are primarily discussive, not calculations, the other areas there is a lot of arithmetic involved, a lot of techniques that you need to get to grips with and learn. Although having said that, always approximately 50% of the exam involves calculations. The other 50% is more what you might call theory, where it's discussion, where there isn't calculation. Uh, because the examiner is very keen uh, that you tested that you understand what's happening and you haven't simply learned rules. Obviously there is quite a lot of learning, but you haven't simply learned rules without really knowing why you're learning them. Uh, this does follow on from um, the earlier management accounting paper, financial manage, no, sorry, paper F2, as used to be called. Um, but only some aspects of it, particularly investment appraisal, you should have studied in the earlier exam or at university if you were exempt. Um, you should already be aware, for example, of something called discounted cash flow. Well, the arithmetic techniques remain exactly the same in the um, financial management exam. Um, it's just that there's a lot more involved in the questions in the first place. Uh, now, don't worry too much if you didn't take uh, paper F2 or you don't remember uh, what you may have learned because all the relevant bits I revise again in the financial management lectures uh, as you're going through. You, you'll see how to revise them. So that essentially is what the syllabus is about. Uh, the exam itself has three sections in it. Uh, section A of 15 short questions, each carrying two marks. Uh, some are calculations, others things like which of the following statements are true, and then a choice of statements. Uh, section B is also two mark questions, but here uh, three scenarios, each with five questions. So what happens here is it's a longer, there's more information but then on the same information, there are then five two-mark questions. So for this one, there is more to read, but it's the same reading for each of the five questions. And there are three of those. And finally, section C, there are two what we call long-form questions, where a full question, it can be split into parts, but some parts will involve arithmetic, others involve writing. And so you can do the arithmetic yourself. There are 100 marks in total. Uh, as to how you actually take the exam, depending what country you're in, there are two options. In some countries, there are still what we call paper-based exams. In most countries now, or more countries in the future, it'll be uh, the next slide, which is taking the exams on computer. Uh, now, the level of exams is identical, whether it's paper-based or whether it's computer, and the same three sections. If you are in a country where you've got to take a paper exam, then you get three hours, 15 minutes. Uh, the first two sections are all multiple choice, and so for every question, there'll be a choice of four answers, and you effectively tick the right one. Uh, section C, you'll write out long count, you'll be given an answer booklet and you actually write out an answer in full and calculations and uh, theory bits and the pass marks 50%. Um, more and more countries now, it's in fact computer based uh, and in computer based you actually get 3 hours 20 minutes, so I'll explain why you get more time in a second. Uh, again, there are three sections. Sections A and B are what we call objective test questions, where some of them will be a choice of four answers and you tick the right answers. Others, for example, there might be a box to fill in, you do a calculation and type in the number. There are various styles of questions, and in fact it's very important that you 
have a go at this specimen exam on the ACCA website where you'll see exactly what it looks like and the different styles of questions you can ask. Uh, section C, again, because it's on computer, you'll be typing your answers. And there's a built-in spreadsheet which you use for the uh, calculation parts of questions uh, and a word processor uh, for the theory ones. So again, although uh, they're very like whatever spreadsheet and word processor you presumably use at work or are used to using, Again, it is important to have a go at the specimen exam and then you're really sure what it looks like, how you navigate and so on. Uh, the reason you get longer is there will be five extra questions of two marks. So the exam as a whole will actually be 110 marks. But these extra five questions, and you won't know which ones they are, they'll look just like all the other questions, but the marks won't count to the overall mark. So when it comes to the marking, whether you got those five right or wrong will be irrelevant. It's the other 100 marks which you're being marked out of. Now the reason they're there is to make sure they can standardise the level of the exam. Uh, because on the computer based, these questions are selected at random from a, um, a large database. And so to, uh, everybody gets a different exam. So to make sure you're all at the same level, they've got these five extra questions that they can monitor. So it may sound a bit confusing, but while you're doing the exam, you won't notice because you won't know which those five questions are. Um, so it's not as though you can, oh, these are what they call the seeded questions, I'll ignore them. Uh, it, you won't know, they'll just be scattered around. Again, the pass mark is 50%. So, I'll say, you'll have to check on the ACCA website whether in your country you'll be doing computer-based or whether it's still paper-based. Uh, as far as how to study for the exam, on our website, all the resources are completely free of charge and cover everything needed to pass the exam well. Uh, the main bit are the free notes and lectures. There are lecture notes which you must download and print out, but they're to be used with the lectures. They are only notes. It's in the lectures that uh, I work through the examples, uh, I explain what's happening, I expand on the notes. So it is vital that you use both together. If you're not prepared to watch the lectures, then you really need to buy study texts from one of the approved publishers. Um, other bits we've got to hopefully help. Uh, something called flashcards, uh, which are quick memory joggers, uh, mainly on um, terminology. Uh, tests at the end of uh, every chapter of the lecture notes is a link to an online uh, short test of five or six questions of the, the sort of time you get in the exam. So just to check how you're going. Uh, we've got forums, actually two forums. There's, there's one standard financial management forum where you can talk to other students you can ask them for help or advice or whatever. Uh, and, and ask the tutor forum, where if you do come to anything you're not clear about, if you ask in the Ask the Tutor forum, uh, then I'll answer and help you uh, always within 24 hours. Now, that's on the website and that's all free. However, you must buy, we don't provide them, uh, a revision kit, or an e some people call it an exam kit, from one of the ACCA approved publishers, uh, which are BPP and Kaplan. Uh, they're both as good as each other and they're both approved. But you must get a current edition of one of these because they're full of uh, relevant past exam questions and lots of other exam standard questions, together obviously with answers and workings. 
uh, and practice is every bit as vital as the studying. We provide everything you need for the studying side of it, and bits of practice, our tests and so on. Uh, but uh, practice is essential to passing the exam, both to check that you really do understand things, um, to get used to the style of questions and the wording of questions, uh, to get used to the speed, because particularly on these two mark questions, um, you have to be able to go fast. You have to be fast at reading and fast on your calculator. You've got to practice. And I know there are past exams available on the ACCA website, but there's only a limited number available. And also, over years, the syllabus has and does change. Now, if you take exams from too far back, or look at exams from too far back, uh, very often they might be examining on something which is no longer in the syllabus. Um, by having a revision kit from one of the approved publishers, all the questions are relevant to the current syllabus. Uh, finally, just quickly, um, a couple of ways, or three ways you can help us. Uh, we give everything free, and the only way uh, we're in a position to expand and improve um, the material we offer is by getting more people using us. So please do spread the word, tell your friends about open tuition. Uh, subscribe to the YouTube page when, when you watch a lecture, if you hover the mouse over the top left hand corner, uh, a button will appear, click to subscribe, it doesn't cost anything. And do help other students on the forums. Uh, one of the best ways of making sure you understand something yourself is when you're typing it out to explain to somebody else. If you can explain to somebody else, uh, you're that much more confident that you understand it and that you can express it. So there we are. It's an interesting paper. It's a fun paper. Um, as soon as you can, get the notes printed out, start working through uh, the lectures in order.